All right, well, I'm gonna try out the first attachment from the auction. It should be interesting. I've got it connected. Now keep in mind, I was so in hesitant to connect this, I just assume that all the connectors are tight from the factory. But I'll power it up and see what happens. This is continuous flow hydraulics, which I've never used before, so it might take me a minute to figure out what the heck I'm doing. Give us a little primer of why this machine is so dangerous. Uh, this is gonna be a high-speed spinning blade that is held on by two captive nuts on each side. And if something were to go wrong, the blade would be come off at pretty high RPM. This is pretty thick steel, so I don't think it'll go through that. But it could come out the front, so. That is death. That's what that is right there. Get a mowing attachment. It'll make mowing the property so much easier. Get it all done in like one fell swoop. It'd be awesome. Had a bit of bad luck with this. I was out mowing and I hit some thicker brush and all of a sudden it stopped working. Uh, I tilted it up so I could see it from the cab and I could see the blades no longer would spin. I tried to engage them a couple times and it just budged so I'm guessing something happened to the gearbox. So I've only used this thing for about two hours so that's a real bummer. Hopefully it's nothing serious but I can't imagine with that much hydraulic pressure and it not spinning that there isn't something catastrophically wrong with this. I'm going to take it apart and dig into possibly what could be wrong. This, uh, this should have been filled with oil but it appears it was not. And I can see chips of metal in there, so it just got hot enough for those gears to come apart. So this is a super bummer, and it's my fault. And the reason is, is I bought this from auction and I just assumed that all the stuff would be greased up and ready to go. I should have double checked it, I really should have. This is completely an avoidable mistake and I should have, I should have known better. I'm gonna try and find uh, another one of these gearboxes. Keep in mind, I only paid like 800 for this full mower. Even this being super expensive would be a bummer because that would you know double or triple the price of this. I'm gonna look online, see what these things actually go for. My bad on this one. So, see what we can do. Just wanna document, this is my wife Colleen. She has her first console because she wanted to play Animal Crossing. This is her first console. This is the last time I'll see her, folks. <laughs> All right, so after doing some research, I guess these can be repaired, but I'm gonna try taking it apart and see if I can get it apart without a huge press. I assumed everything was pressed together, but then after doing some research, it looks like that's not the case. It looks like they might be held in with a retaining ring. Um, you have to destroy shaft seals to get them out, but you have to do that anyways. So let's go ahead and try to take it apart and see what happens. So this is TC357210, which means 35 millimeters is this shaft, 72 is the outside hole, and 10 millimeters thick. That is a standard seal, so let's try to get that out.
See, lube. Lube always helps. Okay, what I want to point out here is that this is a bearing that unrolled itself, so it should be about half that height, and it's kind of stuck on the shaft. I can't get it off. In fact, I broke a screwdriver trying to pry it off. So I'm going to try to Dremel cut it away. It, you know, it's going to be absolutely kind of terrible, but we're going to go ahead and see what we can do. I ended up going just a little bit too deep here, but I don't think that's a big deal. The thing that I thought was hard was actually easy, getting this ring off. And now the thing that I think is going to be easy was really hard is this metal that's been mashed into those gears. I thought I'd be able to take a wire brush and get them out, but it is fused to that, so I'm not sure what I am going to do yet. Okay, so I got this all grinded back down, or at least in a position where I think it's good enough. I mean, this is a brute force machine, should be just fine. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna freeze this and heat the bearings to try to make it easier to put on. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna put these in the freezer overnight. See if I can get them to shrink a little bit. All right, right on top of that California pizza kitchen. That looks good. And uh, come on, shrink baby, shrink. All right, I've got my oven out of storage. I'm going to 248 degrees and uh, I'm gonna heat up the case and one of the bearings. So something that I wanna try is this is an old bearing, okay, about 79.98. So, let's see what that expands to. So here are the new bearings. Look at that. Ooh, it feels so nice. <laughs> the other one's just grind. It's the way it's supposed to work. No play, very tight bearings. It's been about 30 minutes and our oven has pretty much reached temperature. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check what the components have reached with an infrared thermometer. This is good to not just put it in there and assume everything got to the right temperature. You know, the sensor could be off in here um, or your oven or whatever you're using. Looks like the case is about 212 degrees. My test bearings only at about 150 and the new good bearings about 160. So we'll let them keep warming up for a while. We're still probably you know, about 100 degrees off, a little less than that. So we'll let them keep going for 10 or 15 minutes. That should probably bring the temperature up on them. And hopefully we'll be good. Because I'm impatient, I really want to check and see if these bearings have started to grow yet. So I'm going to measure them. 40.05. Uh, this was 39.6. This grew. Yeah, that's that should work nicely. Oh. On? Sweet. That was it? That's it. I don't have to hammer it? Go ahead and just see if it's... Just tap the edges. So 
a little bit. In. Unfortunately, I got a little ahead of myself and had to get that bearing back out. I realized I need to get the bearings and the drive shaft together and then slide that whole thing together in as a unit into the housing. does not look like we're seated far enough. Okay. This ring. Uh, I'm, well, I'm very short so the camera can see how sexy my legs really are. Oh God, I'm so glad I bought this tool. <laughs> does it matter which way it goes? I don't think so. Yeah. Oh man, that is, that is uncomfortably hot. Mess up. It's going to need to go on the side, actually right as close to the side. Okay. There we have it. It's all back together. It looks pretty nice. All that noise is coming from the gears, but feels pretty smooth. So now I just need to get oil seals back in and we'll be good to go. All right, so yesterday we got all of the bearings replaced and swapped in this, and now it uh, feels nice and uh, feels like it should run. Um, today I am putting in these uh, these oil seals, which I was not familiar with until this uh, process. So anyways, they should just go on, but once you get them in there, they're on for good. Like you can't really take them out. Uh, at least I never found a way. I don't even see a way that you could possibly get it. Maybe they make a special tool that vacuums or sucks it. Who knows? You know, they're they're worth, you know, seven to twelve dollars a seal. So it, it, I don't think it's worth it to really save. Especially in my case where there was a lot of heat damage. I did order two of every seal just in case. These are rubber, they're they're kinda sturdy, but they're gonna need to be put on delicately using a rubber mallet and making sure that you apply even pressure all the way is what I guess is gonna do it. So let's give that a shot. This is this is kind of a big diameter, so I don't have, I don't think I have any tool that's really gonna fit this up. I might be able to use some of the old bearing parts to get it on. So I'm gonna give that a shot. Hopefully it goes well. I'm just going to apply a little gear oil to both surfaces to help the plugs slide into this. All right, looks like that's on. Just making sure it's free of all burrs. Before about this, this does have a spring. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It holds this tight around the shaft, so I wanna make sure that you don't really damage it when you're getting it on here. So I'm just trying to lightly kind of stretch it and make sure it doesn't, there we go. You don't really nick it because that could cause the oil to leak. Got the old, the old bearing case that came out, so I'm gonna try to use that. That looks good. Looks real good. So all still spins nicely. You know, if I would have thought about this, I would have tried to replace this with, you know, like a C-clip instead of this, because this is kind of a pain to get out of there. This piece of metal is a little warbled up. The parts that are sharp, I'm gonna put up, not towards the seal, just to make sure they're protected. So that just holds that from coming out of there. Hmm. 
There we go, that looks good. Okay, I've got one more left. Let's check for any burrs. That all feels that all feels surprisingly really nice. Also, I made this helpful diagram when I was putting these all back together. I went and I studied the disassembly video and made sure I labeled all the spacers and clips. So I put these back together, I didn't forget anything or have to go scrubbing through the video back and forth to see what I had or didn't have and to make sure. Anyhow, just double checking this to make sure there's, there's nothing else between this and there isn't. I just put a little bit on this shaft so it slides down without getting caught on anything. And this is the same gear oil that's going to end up in this gearbox, so, so I'm not worried about contamination. Okay. Just want to make sure you get over those bumps without, without damaging. There we go. Okay, that's below the lip, so I think we're seated. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fill this with the gear oil. What's gonna happen is it's gonna run behind this first bearing and go down that shaft, the next bearing, and then hopefully to the shaft seal. So I wanted to kind of fill this up and let it sit for a while and make sure we have no leaks. I'll just fill it to the bottom of this so it's not completely full. I can see that mark inside. I'm gonna go ahead and just fill that. This had like a silicone seal before on here. I'm just gonna clean this up, just temporarily get the lid on here, just in case I knock this over, oil just doesn't spill immediately all over the place. All right, so something that I noticed a little too late is there are a couple sides on this gearbox that have been rusting. It's a new thing, well, relatively new, just a few months old, but if you don't protect steel services, they rust and it'll just get worse and worse and worse. Granted, it, it may not ever get too bad, but you know, who knows 10, 15 years down the line how bad it could get. I should have noticed this when I had all the bearings out. It would have been real easy to just paint the thing, but now that I got the bearings and the seals in, I was like, oh, I really should have treated this. I'm gonna just do a best effort paint job on this thing because it doesn't really matter as long as you get something on there to protect it. You know, it may eat through it, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a rust reformer. You're supposed to spray directly on the rust. You're not supposed to really pre-treat it at all and then you can paint over that. It's supposed to like have a chemical reaction with the rust that turns it into like a binding agent. I'm not fully sure what happens with that, but that's what you're supposed to do. So I'm just gonna spray that on it and maybe a couple of light coats and at least I will get the visible rust under control and get the surfaces protected in theory. So it's got a drive shaft out of the bottom which makes it extremely unstable. So I'm just gonna cut a hole in this box and set it on here and paint it in place. So hopefully that'll work. Well, good enough. So see this top needs some paint, this flange here, and then there's a rear flange that has the same problem. So the painting actually uh, looks like it did a good job. Should help prevent uh, more rust from building up. I got the three surfaces that had rust on them, so I think that's I think we're good there. What I didn't have is some silicone RTV for sealing this top up. Uh, when I pulled it off, it kind of all just crumbled, which is you know that's fine. But you need this to put it back together. So let's see what it says here. Finger tighten until the material begins to squeeze out around flange and then let dry for one hour and then tighten to torque specifications. Allow 24 hours, uh, blah, blah, blah.
Okay, let that dry for an hour and then we'll crank it down. So while the gasket is drying on top, I figured this would be a good opportunity to put it back on the mower deck. Uh, and then in an hour when that seals, I can tighten the top, but might as well get some stuff done while we wait. These are just splined, so they can just float on here. There we go. The mower blade is down below. I'm just trying to get the splines lined up so it will drop into place. There we go. This different size shaft keeps this from walking off. So to make this easier, I'm gonna go get the tractor so I can lift this up and get to the bottom of those bolts. I know I did it um, when it was on this deck before, but uh, it's kind of a little hard and since everything's wet, it'd just be easier to lift it up, get it off here, be able to get underneath. Okay, something that I wanna do before I got too far ahead of myself is actually test this motor uh, before I connect it all up in case that got damaged too. And since these ride right against each other, that would probably make a bit of a noise. So I'm just gonna take this back out for now. Okay, so I think that went well. I didn't hear anything that sounded bad, so I'm just gonna disconnect it just in case there's any pressure in it so I can uh, put the gear box back on. All right, since this can kind of float around in here, I want the alignment to be close as possible. So what I wanna do is I wanna get this chain on first, and then once I have that chain on there, I'll see kind of where it wants to settle, and then that's when uh, I'll start tightening it down. have to get these two spacers in the center. This might be a little more difficult getting these two in here. So maybe if I put pressure on it from the side. Oh, that worked great. No big deal. Ain't no thing. Okay. Hopefully this is easy enough to go back on. There we go. It's clicked into place. This is a two person job, so I'm calling in the help of my wife. Okay, so now I'm going to run the motor with just the drive shaft loosely attached, so hopefully it'll settle into a natural position where it wants to live. Now I need a big wrench. Yeah. Wrench it, baby! Too big. Too small. Just right. I think these threads are a little gnarly from, for whatever reason.
or this RTV silicone gasket stuff has dried for an hour uh, with it just loosely on there. So now it says that you can tighten it. And it's still, still squeezing out. So you know what? I'm not gonna fully tighten that until it dries a little further. But what I will also do is grease this chain. will also help protect it a little bit against rust and however it will be a dirt magnet so that just seemed still a little too wet so i'll try again in a couple hours no real rush for this today it's been broken for a month but we're getting to brush clearing season here in la and i wanted to get it fully running and not under a uh, strict timetable so it was good that you know i had the time to really research it and repair it, and not rush out and try to do a hundred different things to get it fixed without you know, really researching the cause or getting the right parts. Let's talk about this uh, price-wise. I could not find this exact match in a gearbox. So that kind of struck me as something that would be really difficult to try to just get this. There's similar products like it, but they didn't match the same drill holes. You know, you've got a specific distance here, you've got a specific distance here, you know, these splines, the bottom splines. So it just seemed like a can of worms to try to just replace this and also really expensive, probably more than what I paid for this mower. I bought this mower at an auction brand new for like $800. It seems like that's about the going rate for these, $800 to about $1,200. And it seemed like these could go up to $2,500 just for this box if you were to just try to buy that. Let's talk about uh, what I actually have into it. So I bought all of the seals. There's three seals here. There's one here, there's one on the bottom, and there's this plug seal on the end. Those seals were about seven to about $15 each because the plug was cheaper, obviously. You know, then you have to pay for shipping and that took a little while. I didn't know anybody who sold them just locally. There, there might be, but I didn't really research that. You know, right now we're going through the coronavirus issue and so places aren't even open, but luckily you can still get online orders and shipment so far. With that being said, I ordered two sets of all the seals just in case I screwed one up or I had to take it apart again. Again, I figured it just better to get them all now. So there's, you know, there's probably about 80 to 90 dollars in seals shipped uh, and it came from somewhere back east and I can put a link in the description of where I got those. What I was lucky enough, it seemed like the main drive shaft was all together, not really damaged. You know, I had to go and I had to grind those gears back to something that's close. Keep in mind, yes, that's not totally accurate. There's going to be some play in it, but this is kind of a brute force device. And what I mean by that is there's no real precision here. It's just power in power out and that's all you really care about i'm hoping that you know those two gears will mesh and kind of find their you know kind of make their own new flat spots i'll just have to keep an eye on the oil in the gearbox and see you know if it's getting really contaminated i couldn't get all of the flakes all of the mashed metal from the spacers that came up and the bearings that mashed themselves i did a pretty good job with the the grinder and uh, the dremel but i just i couldn't get it all so i did my best on that these are kind of custom pieces you know when they make these things so and since this was direct from China, I had a really hard time finding that specific. I think Brush Hog was the closest one I found and they might have made a shaft that was similar. But a lot of ones that I found is the, the angle gear on the top came off, which is, you know, probably a better design. And if, if that would have happened here where I could take that off from the shaft, I would have I would have replaced that because that was the most damaged part in here um, that still had to go back in. Now the bearings, that was another issue. I found out what size those were and those luckily those were an industry specific size. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of bearing manufacturers. You could go really cheap on those bearings, like 10 to ten to $12, but I went a little more expensive. I got, uh, I think, NS, NSK or NHK. Those bearings, those were about $30 a piece, 30 to $35 a piece. And I replaced all of them because they were all, they were all damaged. And there was some that they still felt a little grindy. You know, maybe you could have used them, but if you're going through all this effort, just replace them for, you know, the extra 20 to $40, you know, it's worth your time to just try to do it right the first time. So there was one bearing in here, one bearing back here, and two on the drive shaft. So we're looking at, you know, $120. All in, I'm under $200 for this. And uh, of course the gear oil too, but that's not very expensive. So I think you know, if this works, this will be a pretty cheap repair for something that could have been disastrous. In most cases, some people would probably just throw the whole mower away because it was, it's too expensive to replace these components by themselves. Yeah, that I think that pretty much sums it up. So I'm going to go out, I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to retighten this, and then I'm going to give it a test. Hopefully it seems to work just fine.
Anyhow, I just want to say thanks for watching, and if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe, uh, comment. Uh, would love to hear back from you guys. Thanks. Oddly satisfying. Yeah, like popping a pimple. Slimy <laughs> yet satisfying. All right, the tempo. All right, it's been. Hold on. Just for the camera effect. I need some credit. <laughs> Look at that. That's where he got me. It's already a little bit puffy. Stop bleeding though. Yeah. Marriage. Sweet marriage.